My name is Zach Soviak. I'm 17 years old and I have osteosarcoma. I've been told I have a few months to live, but I still have a lot of work to do. I want everyone to know, you don't have to find out you're dying to start living. You know, most people live kind of in the middle, in between like, oh, dream come true and you're dying. And it's, it's a very comfortable place to live. I'm living on the two extreme ends, so you have really, really good days and you have really, really bad days. Zach has always been incredibly empathetic and compassionate. This basketball game, I was kind of laughing about how one of the players had kind of a funny run. And he goes, yeah, but he's really good at... And then he listed all these things, and I thought, oh. He's just always looking for the good in people. And I think he's taught all of us that's how it's done. I would say that Zach is a testament to the fact that things are okay when you believe in something greater than yourself in the world. You can be with Zach and just by sitting there with him feel better. He's got... I don't know how to describe it, he's got this aura about him. What makes you happy is seeing someone else smile because you put it there. That's what's awesome about like living in this world, so that you can help people. I, I like the structure of our family with two guys, two girls for the kids and mom and dad, because it kind of evens everything out. Grace has always been his baby. Zach is like the other half of me. All we need is to be there, like in the same room with each other. And that's enough for us. Thinking about my life without Zach, it's really hard to think about that. Like, I really get like sick to my stomach when I think about it. Zach had been going through the eighth grade and he and his sister decided to go for a run. And he came back from the run and he told me, Mom, my, my left hip hurts. So we went in for an MRI, and at this point still I'm thinking cancer was still not on my radar at all. They went in and found out that it was cancer. It was osteosarcoma. And it was so unbelievable, honestly. I was um, upstairs in the kitchen. And I just went upstairs and I cried. And I just said, I gotta live life <clears throat> like, well, Zach's gonna die tomorrow. My mom walked in on me once and I was laying on the ground because I didn't want to associate my bed with being sick. Five days after he finished chemotherapy, he had his routine CT scan of his chest, and they found tumors in both lungs. She told us six months to a year. I just didn't understand that. Like, it didn't make any sense to me. We did have an option of surgery, but that would mean they'd have to take his left leg and half of his pelvis, and he wouldn't even be able to sit up. That's when we got to the point where we have to make decisions about quality of life. With the hospital, it's the most sterile place in the world. But you just do not feel clean there at all. And it was tough being there because you just, you felt totally disconnected. He decided, I don't want to be in the hospital all the time. I want to be out with friends. I don't want to feel sick. And I want to be home. In a house like this, where we have six people and four kids, part of the time I enjoy the heck is just when we're alone, just sitting there. We could be watching a movie, we could be talking cars or whatever. Zach likes to dream big, so he kind of got into cars and you know, car magazines and stuff, and that was that was one thing that he would do in the hospital. I would sort through the cars and be like, okay, which one is the least expensive but has the highest performance? Nissan GTR is like, oh, it's perfect. I've dreamt of that car for 
years. So we have a little tiny surprise for you. I don't like surprises. Oh, I think you're gonna like this one. <gasps> Holy crap! Are you serious? You get to drive it for me. <laughs> You're driving me places. Oh my god. Oh. Hey, Zach, what's up? You like that? Yeah. It's pretty impressive, huh? Oh. The look on his face is so cool. And when Zach lights up, it makes everyone happy. It's like being dunked in cold water and not being able to breathe, but in a really good way. <laughs> It wasn't the car, it was the experience the car created and the joy that Zach receives from driving it and the joy I received from being with Zach when he got to drive it. Being able to experience these things, it helps a lot because you can either sit in your basement and wait or you can get out there and do some crazy stuff.